After the overview of neck spaces in the last video, we go on to understand in detail about the masticator space now. In head and neck, the pathology is mostly site-specific. Hence, we need to know the anatomical extent and contents of a space to make a site-specific differential diagnosis for any neck pathology. The masticator space is enclosed by the superficial layer of deep cervical fascia. The structures here enclosed by this layer are the muscles of mastication, the masseter, the medial lateral pterygoids and the temporalis, the posterior body and ramus of mandible including the temporomandibular joint, the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve which runs in the inferior alveolar canal within the mandible, the vascular structures here are branches of the internal maxillary artery and the pterygoid venous plexus. This is how we see it on the coronal scan, the mandible along with the muscles of mastication. But what we need to pay attention to is the suprazygomatic part, where temporalis muscle is arising from the scalp. So all the pathologies of the masticator space can extend superiorly to involve this portion of the, supra, of the masticator space Hence, remember to pay attention to this part as well. Another thing to remember here is the V3 nerve. So, tumors in the masticator space can have a perineural extension along the V3 nerve and can spread intracranially. So, when we see tumors here, we need to assess the entire course of the V3, including its origin from the pons, the Meckel's cave, the foramen ovale from where it exits, into the mandibular foramen, the inferior alveolar canal and out of the mental foramen. So the entire extent needs to be evaluated because this is the main um, pathway of spread of masticator space disease in intracranially. Here we can trace the masticator space from the suprazygomatic part where the temporalis muscle is seen to originate from the scalp extending inferiorly to see the mandible and the other muscles of mastication the pterygoids and they also the inferior alveolar canal through which the V3 nerve runs. A term that we may all have heard of is infratemporal fossa. Now this is a term, this is an area which is not synonymous with masticator space. There are subtle differences between the infratemporal fossa and the masticator space. So infratemporal fossa is not a fascia line space as contrast to uh, the masticator space. This runs between these two lines, the lateral one running along the medial margin of the mandible and the medial one running parallel to this first line along the pterygomaxillary fissure. In addition to the contents of the masticator space, the other contents here are the retroandral fat and part of the parapharyngeal fat. But what is not included in infratemporal fossa is the masseter muscle. So this terminology should be clear when we communicate with our ENT colleagues. So once we understand the anatomy and the contents here, we know what the various pathologies could be that we see in this space. They could either arise from the muscles of mastication. So they could be mesenchymal limb lesions, metastasis, myositis, denervation, atrophy. It could be pathology of the bone. So we could have osteomyelitis, odontogenic cysts, tumors and mets. It could be from the nerve, so we could have a neurogenic tumor primarily or perineural spread of tumors arising here in this space. Vascular malformations and hemangiomas from the vascular components here and secondary extension of disease from the retromolar trigon or the oropharynx or even the skull base. So a couple of examples here of disease in the masticator space. Now this was a patient who presented with tender swelling and fever over the left cheek. What we see here is edematous muscles, loss of fat planes, air foci within this collection. We see the parapharyngeal fat effacement. In addition, we can trace the extent of the disease above into the suprazygomatic part on the left side, whereas the right side is, well, we can see, we can compare it with the normal right side to appreciate the difference. So this was a case of masticator space infection. So the most common cause of masticator space infection is odontogenic. So when we see something like this, we need to look at the teeth, look for any carious teeth, look for any absence of tooth. As was the case here, we can see an absent tooth on the left side. 
and sometimes even a fistulous communication between the infected tooth and the collection can be seen. Also, we need to rule out any underlying osteomyelitis in these cases because then the treatment needs to be more aggressive. This was a case of a young lady who presented with left-sided cheek swelling. It was compressible. What we see here is a relatively well-defined lesion within the left masseter muscle. Hypo-intense on T1 weighted images, hyper-intense on T2 weighted images. On our contrast images, we can see progressive delayed filling on the right side. That's the right-hand side images are the contrast images and we can see the progressive fill in of these of this progressive enhancement of the lesion we can also appreciate certain fluid fluid levels on the top right image so this was a case of a masticator space slow flow vascular malformation another patient is a 20 year old presenting with a hard swelling here on the right side what we can see here is a lytic lesion involving the right mandible with osteoid matrix formation in the overlying soft tissues a case of osteosarcoma. Another young patient presented with asymmetric prominence of the right cheek. So when we did an MR here, what we notice here, when we compare it with the other side, we see a prominent right-sided masseter muscle, whereas the left masseter is normal. However, the muscle is otherwise normal. There is no focal lesion within, there is no signal alteration within the muscle. So this is a case of benign masticator muscle hypertrophy. We need to be aware of these pseudomasses. This may be unilateral or bilateral. Causes attributed are excessive gum chewing, bruxism or even TMJ dysfunction.